So I remember the first time I ever showed my art to anyone who I thought would, <laughs> that, that mattered. And it was a gallery in Mill Valley, California. And it was a gallery uh, that I would wander into that I absolutely loved all the artists. It was way beyond my pay grade. I mean, I, I was just starting out, but I so admired the work that I saw in there. And I was too intimidated to ever even talk to the director of the gallery, but forget how it happened, but I was able to um, show my portfolio there. Uh, I think I paid for it or some, some way, but I, had a, I got a meeting and I was so nervous and I went in and I brought my portfolio in of my paintings and I, I, I presented them to the director of the gallery and she was, um, to me, she always seemed very kind of stern and, and not very um, warm, but she, she was actually pretty sweet and she didn't end up taking my work um, or, but she said, and I never forget it, she said, uh, I think that, you know, I'm going to wait on your work because I think it's going to get so much better, which I thought was a really great way of, of um, kind of rejecting somebody, but doing it in a way that was probably true. You know, I mean, clearly I would get better and she's going to wait, you know, but I was uh, really dejected. Nonetheless, I was, I was devastated. I was trembling sitting there and um, and I just wanted to get out of that gallery so fast and I gathered my things and I was, I possibly was even like tearing up. I mean, I was so distraught and just humiliated in a way because I, I, I just knew that I just, being rejected for the first time like that, and this was all my work, this was everything, and it was just when I was starting out. And I'll never forget it, I was <laughs> leaving the gallery and I'm walking down the hall and I'm about to leave the door and a woman said, oh, well, hang on a second, um, can I talk to you? And I turned around and it was the woman that worked in the gallery. Her name was Julie Gustafson. And uh, she was the assistant to the director of the gallery and it was the person who was selling the paintings. And she said, I saw a painting in your, in your portfolio when you dropped it off and I just wanna have another look at it. And so I showed her this painting. It was a painting of a horse, this horse, this red horse running and it had this figure carved on top of it which I loved and I still love this painting. And uh, <laughs> she, I showed it to her and she purchased it. Like, and I can't imagine, you can't imagine how validating that was. Anyway, this is Nicholas Wilton and it's Art to Life. And, and I wanna to talk today about validation and what it takes and what gets in our way of making our art. Because if I had known <laughs> what I know now, then it could have helped me a tremendous amount. And what I know now is that there's a secret. There's a piece to this art making thing that most people don't talk about. And it provides you a lot of momentum and sustainability because there's a lot of things, a lot of things that we put up to stop us making our artwork. I don't have enough time. I'm so busy, I can't do this. This is a huge one, gets in the, gets in the way for, for many people. I don't have the space, I mean, I can't, I can't do this because I don't have the space. Um, you know, I see people with, with big studios and I, you know, all I have is this kitchen table, so that won't work for me. If I start making art now, um, I've never done this before. So who, my friends or my family, people are just gonna say, who are you kidding, right? There's this huge imposter syndrome that exists where it's like, I haven't done this before, so I can't possibly do this and make, make a go of this because it's potentially really humiliating. So that's another one. That's a huge one. Just the confidence piece to being able to make your art um, is, will stop you dead in your tracks. A huge one is comparison to other people. There's so much good work out there. Why would I try and do this? Why would I, what, what possible thing can I contribute? I look at all these books, I look at all this work, it's so good, and here I'm coming along. Why am I bothering? I just got an email from someone that wanted to talk about the topic of why bother making your art? If, you know, like what's the point if you're not selling it? Like why, why even do this? Like Nick, can you talk about this? These are up for people, these are real big, obstacles. And I mean, I listed 14 over here on the computer, you know, I don't have anywhere to work. Um, I can't afford the materials. Uh, I can't draw. 
I used to make art, but, but now I'm too X, I'm too old, I'm too young, I'm too busy, I'm too all these things. But there's one thing that we forget about that, that, is the, that, that answers all of these things. And it has to do with the idea that when you're making your art, you're in a completely different headspace than when you're not. In other words, it's the making of the art that actually allows you to make the art. It isn't, none of those things are solvable unless you make the work. Making the work is the answer to those things. You don't feel unconfident when you're making art. You're just in your art making it, if you're truly making it. You're not worried about other people, uh, what, how other people are making their art, or whether this is going to sell or not when you're making art, because you're making art. And if, and if you are worried about that while you're making your art, you're not actually doing it. So this is a, such a cool thing to remember because it always leads you back to the same place. It always leads you back to making your art. And it's, it's a secret, man. Like people don't talk about this. They don't, there's just, they're always, there's so many people are stuck. And this is, this is a huge game changer if you can just remember this, that all your answers, all the solutions, everything come from just participating in discovering the, your own path, your own art, just going into that. That brings you into the present, that brings you into yourself. It takes all that external looking and makes it, which is not controllable. We can't control what people are thinking out there in the world. We can't control, you know, whether you have a, a you can afford it to have a studio or not. We can't control, um, you know, what your neighbors are going to say, or all those things, or whether you're going to sell a painting, you know, all that stuff. The fluke that happened to me in that gallery was so needed, but it actually isn't that important. It's only important if that's what you're relying on, <laughs> which I was to validate myself. And surely in the beginning, these things are very, very important. But when you get it that trying to control external stimulation, things out there in the world, they're actually not going to help. They don't, they don't serve you. The only thing you can control is the in internal ones. And those are the ones <laughs> you use when, when you're making your art. Anyway, that's, uh, that's all I got for you today. I hope uh, you, you, this, this keeps you moving because it does me. It's, what, it, it's just a it's super powerful idea. So let me know in the comments what you think and, uh, and how you keep going and keep the momentum. And certainly what you tell other people who are just on the brink of, of wandering into their own creativity because it's, uh, it's a really cool thing for people to be able to do this. And there's, as I said, a lot of obstacles. Thanks a lot. Um, leave, a, leave a comment below as well as, you know, we got this awesome Facebook group, a lot of great stuff happening in there. So if you want to join that and you're new here, please do so. Thanks so much. Okay, bye. Hey everyone, if you found this helpful, I have a whole lot more to teach, share, and inspire you with every single week. So please join the Art to Life YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. Okay, great. Let's do this.